Hi everyone. Thank you for clicking play. <laughs> Actually, play is one of the words of the um, video today. I just sort of sat here and really want tried to distill what it is I want to talk about. And it's definitely about positivity. And it's definitely about practicing gratitude. And I, I kept thinking, you know, I like to have things in threes. Oh gosh, Porch, you started. Um, and then I thought, actually, one of the cards that comes up a lot for me is the importance of play. And we really should never outgrow that ability to be playful. But I will get to that because that is the third thing on my list. But positivity and cultivating positivity is really important. And there are tricks and tips on how to do that. Um, if you like reducing things to that, but it actually really does work. So you go on a negativity diet and that is not looking at the news that has negative headlines which is all of them really, not watching TV shows that have negative themes, not watching news feeds either, um, not watching films that have violence in them or negative uh, storylines. And you can, you know, you can go on that diet for a day if you want to. You could try it for a couple of days. You could stretch it to a week. And when you start to build on that, you start to find you get really well. Now, after my breakdown... Um, I was using these cards, which I will show you next time, and I'll write down what they are. But I was dealing myself three cards a day, as I did before the breakdown, actually. And I was starting to sort of really think, well, you know, they're so practical, I'll just do them. And one of them was to go on a negativity diet. And I just stopped switching on the TV and only chose films with positive themes and read things that were positive and avoided negative people. And as soon as anything negative came into my world, I would find a way to, to remove myself from it. And I got strong. I got much stronger. So much so that obviously two years down the line, I can look at the news, although this week I really did turn it off and I'm actually going on a negativity diet again for however long I feel like doing it until I feel like I'm not going to feel so destroyed by every time I see something. Um, so it definitely builds up your stamina for joy, <laughs> which sounds crazy, but we do have to re-educate our brains into tuning into the good and the positive and the and the wonderful because there are so many atrocious things happening everywhere all the time across the world it doesn't mean we have to all sit around feeling sad it it means because these people don't want our sadness they want our action and the only way to achieve any sort of positive action is to be positive in one's own life that's all we've got is our lives to demonstrate and practice good intentions always. And if we all do that collectively, the world will change. But it obviously it takes you in your existence to do that. Positivity um, is breeds positivity. It also makes your heart open. It makes you smile more. You start seeing amazing shit everywhere and it really is something spectacular to embody and live in. And everybody has access to it. And there's, a, there's one other thing, because I mentioned a book um, called The Four Agreements as well on Instagram. And um, one of them is be impeccable with your words. So that's another way of being positive all the time is really um, keep a check on what is it that you say. Even <laughs> the weather, obviously, that's it. That's one. But people just bandy around negative shit all the day, all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, it's I'm all right for a Monday morning. Why are you tying your feelings into a Monday? I get it that you that you had a rest at the weekend and you going back to work on Monday as we all try to do 
and do. But we have to get rid of this sort of constant narrative that Monday is a share. It doesn't make any sense because we've got a lifetime of Mondays and I want to embrace my every day that I'm here. Don't you? It's important to cut away negativity. Um, God, what's just come to mind is Jack in the Beanstalk when he's chopping through all that hardened, thorny plants, all that. I don't know what it is. I can't remember what it's called now, but um, it's a case of chopping away make make a clearing for a brighter future for yourself because if you've just got negativity in front of you you, you know you you're going to live in that environment and and it really doesn't have to be that way you can shed it all and people don't even have to know you're doing it it's not something you need to announce it's not something you have to go in with a sword it's not anything apart from being mindful of what it is that you're allowing into your life. And a negativity diet also can include going through, if you're into social media, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, and just chopping away all the things that you don't particularly enjoy seeing every day. Something will bounce up and you think, why am I following this account? It's kind of irritating me. If it's irritating, you stop looking at it. Then it doesn't matter who it is and what it is, just get rid of it. That's going to help. Because I love Instagram. I think I think social media gets such a bad rep all the time. It gets blamed for all the evils in the world. And it's not true. It's what you're following, what you choose to follow. You're in control. You are your own. You have your own driving seat. You are it. You are the, the architect and the director of your life. So if you're following things that irritate you, I'm sorry, but that's your fault. Well, it's not even a fault. It's wake up and just don't, whatever doesn't feel good, get rid of it. Negativity diet, it is really, you really have to think about every single layer of your life. So there might be somebody at work, as soon as you get into work, will say something negative or, or chastise you or have banter with you that feels uncomfortable you can start avoiding that person and if the person doesn't get the message you can actually say to them do you know what I don't really enjoy conversing with you I'm sure you're a very nice person but I really don't we don't really get on and you're stopping me from doing my work there's nothing wrong with that it's the way you say it and and, and yeah some people would get offended but it's so fucking what that's their offense they're upset because they've been told a hard truth about themselves or not, or whatever, it's okay. You know, I you've got to put yourself in some kind of bubble as well. Some kind of protective, beautiful, calm bubble. It says, oh, it's that person again that likes to be negative. And you have to love them and say, wow, I hope they wake up to it. But sometimes you're you complicit in the bullshit by not saying anything and if we, we've got to start saying things about what's going on so that we can change it and it's not about vilifying anybody or getting anybody into trouble it's just gently shaking somebody awake with your boundary with your positivity with your beautiful outlook with your appreciation of everything which brings me to gratitude so my headboard is against the window and in the mornings when I wake around six, I just sort of pull the curtains back and I look up at the sky and it's a different colour every single morning. Today it was like a tangerine and yesterday it was pink. And I'm like, morning sky. It's beautiful. It makes me happy. It's there every day for us to be part of it I went 
I went for a sort of early evening walk down the road with Porchy yesterday and there was a rainbow um, and I hadn't taken my phone with me to take a shot of it, but it, I'll always remember it. It was like the base of a rainbow which covered an entire hill on, on the horizon. So you can imagine all those colours just coming out of, of, the, of the beautiful top of the hill. And it sort of was so wide and vast and it went into a beautiful white, cl uh, white cloud and above it was just blue sky. So you couldn't see the rest of the arc. It was just the most extraordinary sight. And it was healing. And it heals and it helps. And we have to take the time to go and appreciate these things. And I do and will always advocate for getting into nature. And if you can't get into the nature, get to the top of a building and go and look at a view of the sky alone. Skylines are great for, it doesn't matter how industrial that skyline is. It's what is behind it. So I've got hay fever, hay fever, a little bit started, I've got itchy eyes. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, gosh. The, the reason why I hesitated then about all the things I've written on my notes, and really there aren't many, and sometimes I write them and I can't even read my own fucking handwriting, <laughs> is that I did a video this week um, because I'd seen something on TV and and it was and I was I was really upset about what I'd seen from two two different channels and and a completely different energies, and and one of it were one of them was a starving child screaming in hunger, and I say child it was it, he was a baby, and then I flipped to another channel where there was a weather person um, moaning about the fact that it was windy and rainy. And I just thought, how privileged are you if you can moan about the wind and the rain? Because there's people dying out there of all sorts of awful things. There's people hiding to save their own lives. And you've got the time to be on television and infect everybody with your negativity about wind and rain. And yes, we are, the, the weather is, and it's not even extreme weather, it just is what it is now because of what we have done. But we cannot separate, separate ourselves from the elements. That's why we're in this problem in the first place is because we've completely separated ourselves from nature and somebody needs to help get our hands and take us back into it. Because if you can't tolerate the elements, you're not a very strong-willed person. And how are you coping with all your everyday problems if you don't like getting cold or wet or blown about? Wear the right gear. It's amazing. I went out there yesterday in really heavy rain and me and Tina, uh, me and Tina and me and Porche, he was, you know, he was wet to the bone, but he loved it. And so did I. I have to feel that. I wasn't cold. Again, it's all about the right footwear, the right clothing. But, you know, if, you, if you're worried about getting wet, fuck me. How are you coping in real life? It is, and that's the thing, there's the slip. That is real life walking in, the, but in your everyday life isn't your real life. You can transcend it, you can change it, you can turn it into something that is glorious and, and, and beautiful and interesting every day. Have separation from your phone, sit on the tube and read a book. Sit on the bus and read a book or look out the window, just don't tune out. Ch tune in. Scrolling, 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 playing mindless fucking games on screens. What? How's that helping you? It's not. It's really, really not. Um, it saddens me, but then I just think, you know what, it's okay because I think people are converting to a healthier existence. I do believe that. 
and it, the the wonderful thing about changing your life into something positive is that it doesn't cost you a penny so everybody is able to access it that with which we were born into was happiness i had a quick meeting with somebody the other day about some work and we got talking about that and it is it's not something you're born and then you ch achieve happiness you're born with beautiful happiness in your heart and it's everything else around you that changes you in and, and, and you can get back to that that being that person that beautiful glowing golden light that is you So negativity diet, um, you don't even have to announce it. <laughs> and, and you know, if it means to you just coming off social media for, for as well, just for a month, just do it. And again, you don't need to announce it. You just need to manage it. And like I say, if you if you manage who's following you and and if you manage what you're seeing, it becomes only what is what speaks your language, um, and and educates you, and inspires you. I follow a lot of art accounts because I love to see art. I, I love um, stuff about the planet and the stars and the moon and I love you know I follow NASA because they they post pictures of what what's up there which is just so glorious and we're and when I say up there we're actually in it we're not we're not like it's not like a platform in which we look at everything we're in the middle of the fucking thing get some perspective it's so important to health and positivity Because when you realise that we are a speck of dust in the middle of all of this, it's, you know, you start to think your problems are, it lessens your problems and actually makes you start feeling really privileged to be here. And, and with that life that you've been given, try to do good. Try, try to do good. Everything that hurts, everything, everything you, you see that's atrocious, try to, to get involved with in some ways how you can change it in a positive way. Embrace that mission and everything flows and everything comes into the path and you just walk it and it's all good and you're tuned in and, you know, you, you can navigate your life so much better when you're when you're in a more positive place. And all of my videos come down to that, living in truth. Truth is where it's at. In the video I did this week, which I'm not going to post because, <laughs> well, oh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe I will, maybe I won't, who knows. But um, I talk about saying sorry as well because... Even in the video, I said, but I'm I'm sorry about something that I did. And I was like, I'm not actually sorry at all. And it's uh, the word sorry has to be used properly as well. I mean, start using it when, when it's really, really necessary. Because what happens is, I mean, I, I have somebody that um, I, I work with who if he gets on the phone and the first thing he always says to me is, oh, I'm really sorry that I didn't. And I always, I don't even want to hear what he's sorry about now. Because it's, he's, there's nothing to be sorry about with what, why he's saying sorry. So I actually said to him, can you stop saying sorry to me every time you get on the phone? Can you say, hi, how are you? And get into the conversation. I don't need your apology about nothing. When did we become so apologetic about everything? It's just fucking bullshit. Be sorry when it counts and then it means something. Change the words, wording even. Do whatever it takes to stop saying sorry when a sorry is not really what is required. A hello is what's required. Um, I'm working on it. I still do it. 
I did it the other day. I had to I had to go and be in the middle of, of, of a meeting. And I said to the person, I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to go to the loo. I'm, what? You just say, I've got to go to the loo. I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> And the person just went, stop saying sorry, because we've just been discussing that thing. And it is, it's it's hard to shake, but you've got to actually know you're doing it and become so present in your life as to what you're saying. You start, you start using the right words. And sorry is that is the one that's sticking with me. More so particularly as I have completely now say what I think. And you can see people that don't really like it or are confused by it. And I could apologise because I can feel that my truth has rankled somebody or made them feel uneasy. <laughs> but that's their unease, not mine. And I don't have to apologise for what I believe. And my boundaries and my beliefs. And, and I'm such a positive person. And I'm so present I read everything well. I think people are just not reading the room at all. And but constantly bumping into each other and saying sorry is so strange. Or or people that don't say sorry at all. <laughs> There's that bunch. He'll do something and don't say sorry. I mean, you know, there are. If you, you know, if, you, if you've got somebody, if you break something of somebody else's, you know, that that deserves an po apology. If you're late for somebody, like really late for somebody, that that kind of deserves an apology. But like, I'm sorry, I need, I'm really, really sorry, but I need to go for a pee. And that was what I said. It's just fucking bullshit, isn't it? It just made me laugh. Because, yeah, she just shouted, stop saying sorry, as I was running to the loo. I mean, it's just, and I was laughing. Because it's fucking laughable. Come on. It's like, let's start using our words properly. And that is, stop moaning about... If you're a weather forecaster, stop telling people it's murky out there. Or my my least favourite weather is cloud... Uh, is windy and rainy. Oh, my God. Shut up, please. Please shut up. Just tell us what the weather is. We don't need your opinion on the weather because... The next person that walks out the house will think that and believe that and share that with the next person. And then there it goes. And it's fucking negative out the door into life for that day. And actually, it, it does. It, and even if you don't, if you don't like the wind and rain, it does stop, you know, at some point. And skies, blue skies come out. And all the while, you're still fixated on what somebody told you the day was going to be like. And in the truth is, you've not even looked out the window to see the change of the weather. I had somebody say to me, I'd seen a shooting star last year because I'd made a point of going out on a clear night to lie out and see it was during a summer. It's actually a couple of years ago. And I was writing my book, actually, at that time. And I saw two shooting stars in a night because um, it was such a clear night. and It was in a very, very sort of um, dark, dark place. And um, I told a friend the next day and my friend said, I've never seen one. And I said, well, how many times have you taken the time to go and look? And the answer was never. <laughs> Which I was like, well, that's why you're not seeing them. And he laughed. And it's true because you're not going to see stuff if you don't look, but you can't not believe other people that have seen them or be jealous of other people, the people that have seen them or state that you've never seen one. It's kind of obvious you've never seen one if you don't take the time to look. And that just brings us on to slowing down, which I definitely talked about last week. Being more present really means that you've got to slow down. And as somebody with ADHD, it's it's kind of an interesting thing. And I've talked about that in the past as well. That the more um, tune into what how I operate, the more I know if I'm. I think well, if I just do this one last task, and then I actually am going to give myself a break. You can manage yourself better. You don't need any drugs or anything. You can actually just become quite tuned in to that. 
I mean, everybody knows that I have a cannabis med um, prescription privately, which I've, I've been taking now for like, I don't know, is it, God, it's a year and a half, I think. And that really helps with presence too. And please God that, well, it's about, to just keep talking about the fact that that will be legalised in, in this country at some point so we can all have access to some good healing medicine. But while that's not happening, the positivity diet, the being impeccable with your word, don't speak negatively, don't share gossip. Sorry, yes, I forgot I was talking about that. That is one of the four agreements is be impeccable with your word. So that is to be positive at all times. Um, don't, uh, don't gossip. As soon as you hear gossip, Either excuse yourself from it and walk away or sit until that gossip has passed and then engage in the conversation again, if you so wish. But don't indulge in it. And that's not, I'm not talking about celebrity gossip, although that's part of gossip, obviously, but it's only a small part of gossip. People are gossiping about people all the time in everywhere you go, in the workplace, in the family, in the street, in the village, in the town, in the city. You're being spoken of by someone and it can be good or bad, but really, why are you speaking of, of it's just, it, if you talk about people you know, talk about your experiences, talk about what's actually happening, not what you've observed, because you'll be wrong. You'll be wrong about it, you know. And also, if it's negative, don't share it. Really be mindful of your output. So you can't change anybody else around you, but you can definitely change yourself. You can definitely start thinking, how can I be better, sound better, operate better? And that's listening, really listening. Not half listening on your phone and these are your friends or whoever you bill as people you want to spend time with and just kind of like water the experience down completely. So you keep putting yourself in murky, and I will use the word murky because it's good in this context, murky ponds of people. <laughs> you can actually get yourself out of it and just move on and find it's it's good. It's great. It's exciting actually because... You will lose numbers of people that you're hanging around with. And I always say this, I've never had like a group of people because I'm not, I'm better one-on-one. -on -one. I'm just better one-on-one. -on -one. So I've had, I've had few friends and I've kind of been all separate with them because I can't juggle them all in one space because everybody starts being, I had one, one party once and I just felt like everybody was being a bit... I felt like I had to manage everybody and it was all glitchy and weird and I hated it. And so I don't do it. I prefer one on ones with people completely so I can give them my 100 percent attention as well. And I don't feel like I've got to, I don't know, manage too many personalities. It's just the way I am. And that's just the way it is. But it depends on the personalities as well, my goodness me. I mean, it is what it is. And it is interesting to find yourself with like very few confidants who won't judge you, who won't share the information. I mean, therapists do that, but therapists cost money. <laughs> but it, I need to have a therapist just to tell her everything that's going on. Cry it out, shout it out, scream it out feel it understand it and process it and and and, and you know and and so and you know it is just a really important thing to do but but it's be great to have that in life as well and i am starting to do that and you can do the same right i'm gonna go i can hear porchy barking and i've been speaking for 29 minutes which is i can't really do much more than that it just comes out the way it comes out as you know i wish you a heavenly week life and I will see you again very, very soon. Thanks for listening. And um, I'm sending you all my positive energy for you always. Thanks for listening. Bye.